What's up, guys? Welcome back to the <laughs> Trophy Ridge booth here at the ATA show. And uh, we got our buddies from Tethered in here. We got Ernie and Carl and Greg, and we're visiting about saddle hunting today. Yeah. Thanks for having us, man. This is yeah, it's super fun. Yeah, appreciate it. Let's talk all everything saddles. Cool. It's, a, it's sort of the hip new thing in hunting in the last year or so, but you guys have been doing it forever, and we started dabbling in it, and, like, the light bulbs are just going off everywhere. Mm, sure. It's so fun to see people when they first get their hands on it, and they're like, like you said, the light bulbs go off. We could watch you guys doing it. You're like, wait a minute, this is awesome. It's like this and that, and it's it's you can watch people just – naturally start to get it and yeah. as soon as they do it's over i mean they're in a saddle at them we're in the yard and like these guys are showing me and zach how to put everything up and how to you know attach it properly and what how to use different accessories and so on and so forth he, like ernie's a freaking monkey dude <laughs> yeah, yeah. like he does he he starts just grabbing ropes and stuff he's like yeah i can get up in that tree i don't even need anything but a rope i can get up there and he's, hunt. Got, he's got a built-in rope well he was a <laughs> ernie was a tree trimmer yeah. professional tree trimmer for like 20 sure. years so he's very versed in all that stuff yeah right yeah, yeah for and sure that, that's kind of where tethered comes from initially yeah. right yeah, yeah so you we, know, we kind of took like the arborist world and the rock climbing rock world, climbing recreational world. rock yeah. climbing. And we said, you know, why is everything in the hunting industry have to be so bulky? You know, I don't want to say everything. There's great products out there, but um, a lot of the safety-focused products were bulky and heavy and not really terribly user-friendly. And then you're talking about heavy metal tree stands. And, mm -hmm. and we said, well, they're already doing it, you know, uh, in the recreational rock climbing world, in the arborist world. They're already doing it. We had been saddle hunting for years. There was just no real commercial products available for us. So right. we were we were having to DIY everything. And yeah. finally, Ernie and I got together um, on a on a pig hunt in, in Georgia. And we said, you know what? Let's just make this stuff. And <laughs> Yeah, if we do it right, we'll be able to get free stuff for ourselves. Yeah. That was kind of the gig. We're like, <laughs> maybe we'll sell enough yeah. of them that uh, we'll get a couple pieces for ourselves. Yeah, if we can sell a couple hundred of them, our, our initial order that we had to make, the minimums with the, with the manufacturer, was like 200 pieces. And we were hemming and hawing back and forth. Ooh, that's a lot of money. We have day jobs. We're like right. real normal dudes. We're, we're, we're not a big company or anything. Yeah. And uh, we were like, ah, that's a lot of money. Can we do it? And, and then that turned out to be an unfounded fear because once we started putting these things together and people started to see how much freedom it would give them to hunt more efficiently and more mobile, it just like the light bulb went off for them. So it was pretty cool. It's been a fun ride, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and it, the fun part is, I mean, even just like sitting here, we're getting to meet and talk with so many people that we might not have had access to before that that's just been a blast. I mean, this whole thing is, it's a labor of love for us. It's always been just like, this is fun, let's do it. Yeah. Right. And, you know, this is where we got to. Right. Yeah. And like he said, you guys are DIY guys yep. at heart. Yep. So you're always trying to figure out how to. It doesn't stop. I mean, for me, my brain does not shut down. It, yeah. It just doesn't. Um, I get. One thing kicked off and done, Ernie and Greg, you know, let's do this, let's do this. Then we do the final tweaks on it. That's done, and it's like, okay, what's next? You know, I'm, there's constantly things on the back burner that you're just bringing forward. And right now, we got a lot oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on the back burner. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> Keep your eyes open. We, yeah. we got some surprises for yeah. people in the next year. What are some of the common, you know, concerns, misconceptions, myths, and that sort of thing that you get from folks? you know, that are trying, that are thinking about the saddle game, that I, are trying to go from one to the other. You get a few, but I'll take the first one, and then you guys can jump yeah. in with the first one is definitely comfort. People go, that cannot be comfortable. And I get it. You know, you're used to sitting on a metal tree stand uh, or a big comfy summit climber or a big, mm -hmm. you know, lazy boy in the tree. Sure. And then they go, there's no way that thing strapped around your waist can be comfortable. But it's just... It's just not true. Um, most guys, after they after they get into it, I call it saddle shape. Once you get your body used to the different geometry, the different support, you know, it, it supports your butt and your back in a different way. Um, and so once you get into saddle shape and your body is kind of used to that different geometry, most guys find it as comfortable or more comfortable than a traditional small lock-on style tree stand. I mean, you're never going to get as comfortable, I don't think, as like a big summit lazy boy in the tree but i don't need that to go kill right. a deer you know you can absolutely be super crazy comfortable in a saddle harness if you're willing to spend 
just a little bit of time and figure out the system, figure out how to get it set up for you, because everyone's different, you know. But once you figure out how it works for you, you're right as rain. And that thing is mega comfortable. People don't like to change. Whatever they're comfortable with exactly. is what they stick to, right? Yep. So if I'm a if I'm a ladder stand guy, to convince me to do something different takes takes a lot. You know, once you get past that, it goes and, and the comfort thing goes in. The next biggest thing I think that I run into all the time is, well, how do I get up the tree? I'm like, well, how are you getting into your tree stand now? I mean, if you're if you got a lock on and you got sticks and that's how you're getting up, it's the same thing. Take your sticks, go up. Any method that you're using to climb a tree today still works with a saddle. All you're doing is you're changing the top three feet of your stand from a right. from whatever it happens to be now to a saddle and a platform. You know, because like with any tree stand, it's plug and play. You climb up, you sit down, you're hunting. That's it. It is what it is what it is all day long. Right. Um, with the saddle, there's a little, like Greg said, there's a little bit of tweaking. Everybody is different. Everybody's built different. Uh, they're going to have to, you know, maybe adjust tether heights, you know, and stuff like that, um, saddle position on the body. Just give that a little bit of effort and time. Um, it'll come. Like that. Like Greg said, that saddle shape will happen. Um, for me, there I didn't have that. And it, it seems like um, on social media and stuff and on Saddle Hunter, you can tell the new guys who are – Skeptical or? Well, who are having uh, maybe some adjustment issues because they'll ask the questions. And that's mm -hmm. awesome that they're asking the questions, you know. Right. Because um, there's always somebody out there with an answer. Um, but then there's some guys, and I was one of the lucky ones. I sat in it, and it was like, done. Me too. Yeah. You know, it was, it was easy. like It was, it was easy. Instant. It was yeah. like yeah. instant, you know. It either, either goes that way or a guy has to do some tweaking and some adjusting and stuff. But you guys showed me like a little bit of adjustment goes a long way. Sure. Yeah. Like it's when, inches. I mean, yeah. you move things a little bit here, a little bit there, it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, you start right. messing with angles and weight distribution, I mean, it just <laughs> it changes quick. To, I to actually notice, and maybe I'm all wet here, but uh, it seems like I don't have as much leg fatigue when I'm sitting for a long time in the saddle as I would on a – and a stand mm. your bridge is supporting a lot yeah, of your sure. weight yeah like if you're just standing on a platform like in a stand oh you're definitely gonna get more yeah tired. you're splitting yeah. that load distribution a lot yeah. you know because when you're standing on stand 100 percent straight, straight down, down you know yep. and whether you're uh if you're leaning in your saddle um you know you're i don't know exactly what the percentage would be but you know you're you're, you're taking that weight distribution you're splitting it between the saddle and the predator platform you right know? I'm you can move deer. around the yeah. tree and keep stuff in between you and the yeah. deer. And that tree's a great, uh, great method of concealment. Yeah. You know? I mean, and that's another thing I'll say is when you first look at this small platform, you're like, well, I, that, that doesn't give me many options to get around the tree. You actually have more because you, of the way that the saddle works. Like, mm -hmm. I was filming Greg that one time. And Greg is in a stand, and I'm in the saddle Ugh. on the back side of the tree. <laughs> but, like, I'm able to literally take the camera and film the left side of his face. And this is a fairly big tree. And swing all the way around the tree and film him on, from the right side. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how many degrees that is, but you can go. There's just so much more room sure. yeah. to move around. And the other thing I was going to bring up here that we probably ought to touch on is people ask, how do you shoot out of it? Mm -hmm. And I know that'll be an easier thing for us to show on, like, some of our videos and stuff. But you might throw a few tips at them there as well. I know you get asked that question. Yeah, well, you generally you set up in a saddle. Uh, it was, let's start from a tree stand because that's what most people or everyone really is used right. to. So sure. when in a tree stand, you know, you're sitting like this with the tree to your back. And the easiest shot is off to your left. So I would say, I mean, when I was setting up in tree stands, you know, a decade ago, I always set up to where I expected the deer to come in front of me or off to my left because that's, you know, the easiest shot. That's your strong side right. shot. Strong side shot. So you do the same thing in a saddle. It's just flipped around on the tree. So when I set up, I'm going to put the tree in front of where I expect the deer to come from. So if I expect them to come from, you know, a bedding area to my front, I'm going to set up on the back side of that tree to keep the tree in front of me. Make sense? Yep. So you're, you're blocking when they're coming in. And then I want that trail to come past my left side because in a, in a saddle, just like a, a tree stand, it's the, easy, the easiest shot is off to your left or in front of you. Because if the deer is right in front of you, all you have to do is just peek out you know, on that little platform. You just kind of lean out, and you can make that shot really easy. Yep. They can come off to the right, and you can make that shot. We call that the weak side shot um, just because it's a little bit more difficult. But even in a traditional tree stand, if you're sitting, you know, facing away from the tree and the deer comes to your right, you got to stand up, 
you got to do a lot you, of movement. You got to turn around there. to get over there. Right. So you can do people the same just shot. don't think about you that. Think but about whenever it. you were first sitting in a tree stand, you had to go through all those so motions of learning and doing same everything. Thing. You just have to learn in a different way it's to just shoot different. out of the sound. And that's where that three foot off the ground in your yard comes into play. Yeah. You right. Know, I mean, um, you know, we're talking about getting into saddle shape and uh, getting the adjustments stuff right, getting those shots down. You know, you can do all that at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, before you actually get yourself into a hunting situation. But they're really cool. Go ahead. I was going to say, my form tends to be better in a saddle mm. because I'm already standing most of the time and I've got that bridge attachment here. I've got a nice solid, you know, I'm bending at the hips. I'm doing just my form for actually taking a shot tends to be better in a mm -hmm. saddle than I would if I'm sitting in a stand. I can see that. Well, for in, a, sure. in a stand, your feet are your anchor, mm -hmm. you know, and so you've got to be stable from there first before you can start, you know, That's to get true. your form there. Whereas in a saddle, you're anchored way up here. I mean, in any any archery, whether it's compound, traditional, whatever, um, you know, they tell you, and it's true, you know, you want to keep, to get your good back tension and good shot sequence and, and good pull through, you know, you, you bend at the waist everywhere. You mm -hmm. know, you want all this to stay the same if you can. You right. know, I know it's not always going to happen in a hunting situation, but if you can, you want everything up here to always be the same. And since you're basically locked in at the waist, you can do whatever you want because you're pivoting right. from there versus having to be anchored way down here. And it's just, it's awesome. Well, I'm not a very good shot. I mean, yeah, whatever. I, I, saw that, I saw that Bucky shot at your, at yeah. your pop's place. They're all at 10 yeah, steps. That, that, that sucked. That's, that, was, all, that was terrible. They're all 10 <laughs> steps. I'm seriously not that good of a shot, like get a target or anything. And I was worried about it the first time I got in a saddle and I was shooting in sure. the yard. I'm like, man, I don't know where this is, where this is going to go. <laughs> but like... Yeah. First shot, 12 mm -hmm. rings, sure. 25 yards, and it was like, I don't, it was that easy. It just, like you said, strong side, it is just, it's it was, a no it was, I was nervous about it going in, and then I took that shot, I was like, this is really simple. It like, is. Like, this is, I had, there it, is nothing to worry about. Here. I had two <laughs> off the wall shots this year. Um, both these shots that I took out of the saddle, couldn't, I couldn't have done out of a stand. Um, I had one that came in under me and was dead away. I had the, it was right behind the tree. Um, which was, would have been good if it would have been coming the other way because I would have had the tree for cover. But it was walking right. dead away, and, you know, butts facing me, no shot, and then she quarters away. And like Greg said, on that strong side, I just leaned just a little bit, and I shoot a 62-inch recurve, you know. Right. Stuck her out there, no problem. And then the next one was epic. I mean, it was just because it was the worst possible scenario for a shot um, out of a saddle, and it just went down like butter. Yeah. Um, it was it was a offside shot. Had to bring that big old beast up over the bridge to get her yeah. down there. Um, talked about the am steel rolling through the through the carabiner. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, you, you can roll so much the hips, like I said, and keep all this the same. Right. You can just roll in that saddle all the way over and just and keep everything in alignment sure. like it needs to be. But yeah, it was it ended up being a, a what a a, a two o'clock shot four yards out from the tree, you know. And I was able to pull it off with that long bow, mm -hmm. you know. And it was just. It was just awesome. Another I mean, cool thing about the shooting from the saddle versus a traditional tree stand is that you don't have any dead spots. Mm -mm. Whereas in a, in a traditional tree stand, you know, if you're hunting a really small tree, you could probably, you can still shoot directly behind you. But if you're hunting a, a, a good size oh, tree, yeah, you, can't. you cannot shoot, you know, which would be in a tree stand, you're six o'clock. You can't do it. You just, you can't do it. You know, hopefully the deer is walking you know, left to right, and you get that shot behind the tree. But like Carl said, if that deer is walking away from you, you're in trouble. But in a in a saddle, you can shoot on top of the tree to that 12 o'clock shot facing the tree. And that 6 o'clock shot is super easy. It's, it is one of my favorite money, yeah. shots because you literally, I mean, you probably have practiced, oh, yeah. but you literally just turn away and shoot. I mean, it's really easy. There. Your bridge slides in the carabiner, it's holding you up from the side, and, you and just you've just got a nice... Pivot your hips and yeah. make it happen. Yeah. So you can really shoot 360 degrees, which is, uh, to me, a really big benefit. Now, that 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock shot in a saddle, which we call the weak side, that is the most difficult shot to take, and I've only killed maybe two deer yeah, in, you that, were telling in me that. that quadrant. Yep. Matter of fact, the first muley buck I ever shot, um, I shot at like 5 o'clock. And I was all twisted in the tree. And that was way back in the DIY days. And I had these big bulky things and yep. no platform. So it was even more difficult than it would be today. But you can do it. Um, it's just Platform makes a big difference. Platform makes yeah. a big difference, yeah. You know, people see that little platform and they're like, how am I going to do anything with this? But you start breaking it down piece by piece and by design feature, uh, the points on the corners. 
I mean, those things come into play. Well, it's all by design. Yeah, it's all by oh, design. Yeah. That's what you happens know. when you have guys. I mean, I, I called us experts, and but there are a lot of saddle hunting experts who right. have been doing it for, for years. And the, the only reason I would say we're experts is because we've been doing it so long. Like, yeah. I've hunted from every saddle imaginable. I've hunted from every platform imaginable. I've hunted. I've used every climbing method imaginable. I've come up with some really sketchy platforms and climbing methods that didn't end up work, working and I had no business using. But at the end of the day, it's all of those things that just they build up um, experience and with the experience comes with that little platform yeah it, it's by design that it's so small people go why it's so tiny well you don't need anything more than that um, people it, want something big because they're used to big tree stands but when you kind of change your way of thinking and you get outside of the box you realize you don't need that that's yep. that and it actually in some ways is an impediment to hunting because now you're carrying big heavy stuff so you know, there's pros and cons to everything, but the way we design the Predator platform, it's perfect. It's so much bigger in usability than it is when you look at it. Yeah. When, when you look at it, I mean, this thing's, you know, 12 inches square roughly. Um, you're like, man, I, I can't do anything on that. But you're used to thinking about that's your only support. But as soon as you add that bridge and tether... You've got another piece of support, and you don't have to put all your weight on there. You don't even have to be flat on it. So now if you add a little bit of a lean and you can circle all the way around that platform, circle all the way around the tree, that 12-inch square multiplies yeah. in usability. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Oh, yeah, I was getting in some pretty wild trees yeah. with that thing. And, like, I've been using small mobile hang-on mm -hmm. stands for a long time Yep. and found ways to get them in some crazy situations. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, this year, I there was one tree where we set up. It was probably eight feet off the ground. It was a hedge tree. Yeah. And, like, that thing has just got branches. There ain't a straight branch on a hedge oh, tree no. anyway. <laughs> There's branches everywhere. I mean, I looked at it in the dark, and I'm like, this is the – we've got to be right here. This is a terrible idea. The, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is not going to be fun at all. Because the other guy that I was filming, um, Brian at Hush, he had a stand. And I had the saddle. And I'm looking in that thing, and I'm like, man – I can I could get the stand in one spot on this tree, maybe. But then I got up in there and like put the saddle up and it was or put the platform up and I had all kinds of options. Right. Just because it's so narrow. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you could fit it in between a crook mm -hmm. and a tree where a stand if it folds down, the platform's gonna hit and Sure. Yeah. I mean back just, in the you know, in the, in my tree stand days, you know, you're out there you're, the tree, you're, the trees are starting to dictate where you're going to hunt. You right. know, a lot of times. That's exactly right. And, and it can't do that if you're trying to kill. Exactly. If deer. you're trying to be right here, I mean, you got to be right there. You got to be right there. Right. And once I started, got into this this saddle game and with the, the platform and everything, I would I, I found myself seeking out the most gnarly, branchiest trees I could get up into because the predator allowed me to. Mm -hmm. I mean, there I had I had a couple hunts where I literally was hanging the predator in the saddle off of a feeder branch, off of a, not even on the main trunk, uh, part of the tree. You know, a feeder branch had come up and got vertical because it, 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 was, it was where it needed to be, you know, and I could get there. And there's a lot to be said, too. That big, gnarly tree, it provides a lot of cover, Yes. Right? Instead of a skinny tree where you're a big wart on the side of the tree, it, you know, and silhouetting yourself, if you're in, like, an oak tree or something that's got a bunch of main trunks and branches everywhere and you're just one of them, Yep. It's you disappear up there. And and with the profile of a saddle, your feet are generally closer to the tree, your body's kind of away, you look like a branch anyways. Right. Yeah. Um I find myself getting picked off a, a lot less in a saddle. Just I think they don't I don't think the deer recognize you as easily in that profile. Yeah. Branches grow vertically out like a V yeah. almost on, on the yeah. majority of trees. Yeah. And when you're sitting in a stand you're you know essentially just a blob yeah that's right. sitting that's coming out at a i don't know what angle that would be like a 90 degree angle your knees yep. are yeah. poking out i mean yeah you, and you put making, two guys up there one of them filming and yeah, both of you <laughs> like that now <laughs> yeah. you are an enormous blob of stuff sure i actually love it it happens every now and then you're out on public land and and another hunter will walk by and see you up there swinging around. Yeah. <laughs> and you can just see the look on their face like, what is going on? <laughs> or, or, or a game warden. Yeah. I, I've been stopped by, by several game wardens. When I was hunting in, in upstate New York on Fort Drum, 
uh, I ran I ran into the same game warden a few different times, and every time I had back in the day, it was a big trophy line tree saddle, which I don't, yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with those or not. Oh yeah. But they're big, and they kind of wrap around you, and, and and it's like a camo diaper. Yeah, that was like that's the old exactly joke. right. And yeah. and that game warden was like what are you doing you know and i explained it to him and i showed him at ground level he was real curious he'd never seen one before and so i showed him at ground level how the tether works and how it hooks up and he's like man that is the coolest thing i've ever seen you know but it's really fun bumping into other hunters and showing it showing yeah. them the stuff yeah and i i bike in uh to the place oh, yeah. that i hunt yeah. a lot and uh yeah when i throw my kid on you know i got my little bitty pack and and the predators it's smaller than the profile of my pack Right. Um, but not my, my my pack is small, and then I got a little outer pack over it. And uh, I've had a couple times where you know, you, what do you do when you get to the parking lot and there's other guys there? You instantly start jaw jacking, you know, right. and, and you know talking about it and everything. So I hop on my bike. And I'm like, hey, bro, good luck. And he's like, hey, you're for, where's your stand? I'm like, it's right there, man. <laughs> 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 and he's he just, like, what? He just gives you a double take. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. And and you know, I I think a lot of a lot of saddle hunters, us that are into it. We are all saddle hunting all the time. Like that's right. what that's what we really enjoy doing. But I think it's also important to keep in mind that you don't have to be that way. You can you can look at a saddle as another tool. You know, some trees are great for small lock on stands. They work great. I mean, people kill deer, and people have been killing deer for decades out of hunting uh, tree stands. There's nothing wrong sure. with them. If you think about it as another tool in your toolkit, you know, a golfer doesn't carry just one club. Right. He carries a lot of them for different reasons. So there are some situations on public land like that gnarly tree like Carl was talking about where a saddle is a really, really, really good option, and oftentimes it's the only option. Yeah. If you're um, biking in, too, you know, yeah. that's it's way easier to do yeah. with yeah. that stuff. And that's kind of, to your point, that's what I, that when people ask about it, with my limited experience with them, that's kind of what I, what I tell them. Yeah. It's like, well, what do I need, you know, in order to hunt in a variety of situations all over the place? I'm like, well, get a saddle. You can get a lightweight tree stand, and you get you a good climbing system. You don't need anything else, and you just hunt out of that. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't need to go and buy 40 tree stands unless no. you want to. I mean, right. every, to each their own, of yeah, course. Yeah, sure. But, yeah, that's the nice thing about it is my gear profile has just shrunk that much more, and mm -hmm. I've actually got more opportunities now. Yeah. That's and what I, I look forward to. The with. saddle lends itself to those first-time sets, too. I yes. mean, um, I think Greg said it last night. We were talking, you know, uh, first set's best set, you know. Yep. Um, when, when that's you go to what, first what we preach all the time. And, all the time. And yeah. it's true. It's so yeah, yeah. easy to do in a saddle. You know, if, if, if you've got um, lock-ons, five or six lock-ons all, all around, you're – not very likely to be moving them around very right. much. You're kind of committed, you know. Yep. But with the saddle, uh, you are just 100% mobile 100% of the time, you know. And it can be. You, yeah. And it's, yeah. it, it just, it's easy. It's just so freaking easy to well, do. It's, you've got a time commitment put in on, in that situation. If you've put up these five or six stands and they're yeah. up and you're just you not almost move them. well, you almost feel like you have to hunt at them. Yeah. You put so much time into setting them up, and yeah. you cut yeah. all your shooting lanes. That's what everybody else. says. That's you know, it's like, well, I did all the work. I I have to sit there. Yeah. No, you don't. No. Yeah. But but I get so many folks all the time that are like, man, I just I've been hunting every day, daylight to dark for two weeks, and several times I've had this big buck that I've been after walk 60 yards away past my stand, and I just can't get him close enough. What do I do? Move. It's move. like. <laughs> You move. Yeah. You move 60 yards. You move. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, but I can't move. My stand is there. And yeah. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. well, then you have to catch the deer and reprogram his brain to walk in front of your stand. And the odds of you doing is that is not <laughs> real high. Yeah. So just move. Yeah. That's move, it. Yeah. It's not rocket science, really. You just got to kind of get people to take that leap. And like I said, take them out of that box. Out, yeah. You know, well, get out of the box. And people get stuck in their ways. It's just, it's they do. It is what it is. Yep. Um, that's one of the biggest struggles that we have is uh, trying to get somebody new just simply because they like what they do. They don't want to change. They're comfortable with it. Right. And uh, teach their own, I guess. Sure. Yeah, which there's nothing wrong, like I said a minute ago. There's nothing wrong with tree stands. They work. A lot of people kill lots of big deer from tree stands. So it's not like it's a bad thing. But when you start going down the path of trying to be the most mobile, the most efficient, the most lightweight, when you start really paying attention to your gear to make yourself a more efficient hunter, then that's when a saddle really shines to me. Is mm -hmm. it, There's no lighter method out there. There's no more mobile method out there. There's no more efficient method out there. Right. So 
you know, and if if I was a new hunter looking at getting into I've one system. I've been telling a lot of people, new man, people. Too. there is just get a saddle. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and, and if you it's started super there. super safe, too. That's one other thing I want to touch on real yeah, quick. Yeah, Sorry true. to cut you That's off, fine, Greg, yeah. but it just popped in my head. Mm-hmm. Like, I actually think that it might be the safest way that I've climbed into and set up in a tree because you are attached the entire time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, when you're not swinging around the tree into a stand and then putting on your tether or whatever from that point, you go up with the lineman's rope. Yep. And you're on the tree in the platform with the lineman's rope on when you hook your bridge in. Yep. Well, and how many times... So you never come off. We've all been there, right? You've walked 15 minutes from your truck. You're almost to your stand and you realize you it's don't have your harness. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You don't have your safety harness. You're like, oh, well, I'll be fine this time, right? No. You can't hunt with a saddle without having the saddle. Yeah. Right. So you have to have it. So there's your safety method right there. Yep. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Point. You don't have a choice. Right. If you're using this to hunt, you're tied to the tree. Yep. yep. All the time. And I know lots and lots of guys that hunt at a tree stands and don't wear safety harnesses. Right. I mean. Me too. I, was, I know a lot of guys. It's hard to believe in this day and age. It's hard to believe. But, but yeah. I mean, I grew up tree stand hunting. and We never. I, okay. I have never worn a tree, a tree stand safety harness. I mean, mm-hmm. we grew up hunting on, on lock-on tree stands and climbing tree stands, you know, and we never, ever, ever wore a safety harness. Oh, dude, um, I used to do that Eber Hart stuff, 30 feet, nothing. Like, I can't. I, know. Um, I mean, I look at I that know. now. I'm You're like, like, how am I alive? <laughs> I had an instance this close to death. I was in a climber. It was a tree that was a V. I actually climbed up a ladder stand, got in the V, put my climber on, and went up one half of the V, and I got all the way up to hunting height, and my, my climber was facing the other side of the V, and I hadn't put my harness attached to the tree yet, but I had it. And something happened. I still to this day, I can't tell you what happened, but I just backwards, right off of the climber. My feet were on the climber just like they would be on our Predator, and the V on the other side of the tree got me right between the shoulder blades. So here I am with the, the V between my shoulder blades and my feet on the climber a good 30 feet above a tree oh. stand underneath me. Jeez. I should have died that day. I mean, there's just no doubt I should have died. But if you if you were a tree stand hunter and you're not using a safety harness, you're 100% less safe than hunting in a saddle. Yeah. Like there's, there's just <laughs> yeah. 100%. No yeah. question yes. about it. I mean, that's the truth. You, you just you can't hunt a tree without your safety harness yeah. Yeah. if you're using a saddle setup. Right. So for that new guy that's just getting into hunting and you don't have already those preconceived notions, you're not in that tree stand box. You should really think about getting a saddle. I don't even care if you get a tethered saddle. Just get a saddle set up mm-hmm. and and use that system because I, I think it's a lot of safety, a lot of mobility, very efficient. And, and if you started that way from the beginning, man, you would just be a killer. Yeah. Before we wrap this up, guys, what would you just give one piece of advice? We kind of always we, – we've already – touched on it around the barn twice but what's the number one piece of advice for somebody that's looking to switch to saddle i think you just gotta you just have to have an open mind you know don't don't come into it with any preconceived notions about how am i going to shoot don't worry about that stuff just kind of give it a try and 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 have an open mind if you're willing to keep an open mind and give it 30 minutes in your backyard what you'll find is that it's a it's a great option it's a great tool to add into your toolkit and maybe you're like us and where you figure out that that's kind of your preferred tool that you sure. want to use you know all the time right. but maybe not maybe you just have it in your in your toolkit and you can use it when it makes sense for you but to me you just got to keep an open mind and and think outside the box a little bit don't get so bogged down in what you've always done you keep doing what you've always done and you're going to always get the same results sure so if you're willing to think outside the box and a lot of that goes with the tactics that you guys are preaching too it's the same thing like if you continue to do the same things you're going to continue to get the same results so keep an open mind when it comes to the gear and how you hunt from an elevated position and uh that would probably be my number one thing for me uh there's so much information out there now you know, in the last five or six years, there's a lot of content out there, whether it be the Saddle Hunter Forum, YouTube channels, you know, anywhere. There's so much opportunity to kind of learn how to do all this stuff. And then there's a huge community of people to ask. So same thing, keep an open mind and try it. But if you get hung up, there's lots of resources to kind of get through and kind of learn the little details on how to make it. If you try and go through this whole learning curve by yourself, it's going to be a lot longer process. Mm-hmm. Um, 
when there's so much information out there and so many people willing to help that will get you, you know, through that learning curve and up to a point where you're comfortable with the, system, sure. with the whole system. Get out of the box, be open-minded. Yep. Um, and don't be afraid to ask the question. Whatever it is, because like Ernie said, especially you go to saddlehunter.com on the forums. I mean, there is a slew of, of seasoned saddle hunters on there who... Um, Willing to help. They're, they're help. You I can mean, go like there on and the spend spot. 10 minutes on there and yeah. run a ton um, of stuff. Yeah, yeah just saddle hunting, it's either going to be plug and play for you or you might have a few adjustments to make. But um, just just stick with it. Just give mm -hmm. it just a, just a little little bit of time um, if you're one of those people who have to some adjustment issues. But if you get on saddle hunters, go straight there and ask the questions, and you, right. you will get lined out in no time. Well, thanks for sitting down and joining oh, me. Yeah. Guys. Thank you, Had man. Blast. Appreciate it. Blast. Now we get yeah. to walk around and look at all the cool toys. Yeah. Amen, brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. We'll have a good show, boys. All, All right. right. Thanks, 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 man.